it's a hard one to explain, no doubt. Um, you know, we're disappointed uh, the way tonight went. Uh, we got to be a lot better, so um, yeah, no doubt. So um, we got to regroup here. The Maple Leafs fall flat on their face in game number one as they look ahead to a key game two in their series against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Hey everyone, welcome into another Sun Sports Roundtable. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun Sports columnist Steve Simmons and Toronto Sun Maple Leafs writer Terry Koshan. And guys, it was a pretty bad game number one all over the place for the Maple Leafs. Not sure you could have drawn up a worse start for them. Everything that could go wrong pretty much did go wrong. Steve, we'll start with you. What was your biggest concern? coming out of game number one well goaltending to start with was was weak but that was kind of after the fact they started so poorly they didn't compete they didn't seem to have a game plan of any kind they didn't seem to have an answer for anything tampa did so it was like one team knew exactly what it was doing the other team had no clue what it was doing and then when you add that to really weak goaltending it makes for the kind of disaster we saw in game one against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, for me, Samsonov wasn't good, but that's that's not the issue. The issue is the Leafs had a, a whole weekend to prepare. They were rested. Uh, they, they know what's at stake. They they should have known what the reaction would be if they come out in game one as flat as they did. And it didn't matter. None of it mattered. Uh, they, they were terrible. It was their worst game of the year, period. And, you know, Samsonov was part of that, but I think if Samson off on his game last night, it doesn't matter. The Leafs are done. I mean, you give the you give Tampa Bay that many power plays, you fall behind two nothing in the first ten minutes. The Leafs were toast from the opening face off, or, or maybe from that first goal that Tampa scored. But uh, you know, it's one game, and uh, we do know it's a seven game series. And what happened last year? The Leafs spanked Tampa five nothing in game one, and Tampa comes back to win win the series. So there's lots of hockey left here. It's a series, so you know, obviously. Uh... You know, not the uh, start we wanted, uh, but it's one game, and you know we have an opportunity to to go out Thursday and uh, and grab a hold of it uh, again. So uh, there's nothing that we can change now. Obviously, a lot that we can take from this game, a lot that we can learn from, and 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 put our best foot forward and go from there. Lots left, but one thing you know that concerns me when I see a number as big as seven, and that's what Tampa scored. It's the most it's the most goals at home the Leafs have allowed in 30 years in a playoff game. So there, there is some sort of, you know, challenge in all of that to, to come back from it. And the confidence that the Lightning must gain from a game like that, although you don't see momentum game to game in a playoff series, uh, but the confidence of if you play your game and your style, what can they do to, to come back? And that's what's interesting to me. Yeah, I, I, I see that too. I, I just, uh, you know, Seven goals against uh, only the second time this season, so that that's that's abnormal, and we'll see where it goes in game two. But I, I just think the Leafs will be better. So you guys did touch on the goaltending, which is always going to be key in any game. But what do you think outside of the net mining will be key for the Leafs heading into game two, Terry? Well, just playing with more dictation in the game. I mean, what Tampa Bay brings is they're going to be quick on the forecheck and and smother the Leafs a bit, whatever you want to call it. That's nothing new. I mean, the Leafs Leafs didn't see anything new from Tampa Bay last night. So those adjustments can be made. But just, you know, Keith was talking a few days ago about playing on your toes. Well, then play on your toes. There's no excuse for it. You're going to be on your heels a bit in the start. Well, then rebound from that. And I think that that's the key for the Leafs. Come out with a little more authority in game two and and go from there. Because we've seen them do it. And when I say that, that's on your top players. I know that Matthews and Marner each got on the score sheet last night, but come out and dictate more. And, you know, we'll probably see Yarncroft with them tomorrow night. Dictate more. You're capable of it. Do it. it. It's dictating style and it's competing. And you see it in every playoffs. It's no matter what channel you're turning on or what game you're watching. The competition for a loose puck, the competition in front of your net, the competition beside the net, all those kind of things. And when you see how the Leafs competed last night or how weakly they competed on the loose pucks, on pucks in and around, Corey Perry is a fourth liner whose days are over. And he comes out like Gordie Howe against the Leafs. I don't know what it is. He, you know, he, he just seems to own this hockey team. And, and they have a confidence that playing that style, they can push a puck 
that's beside the net and put it in for a goal. They can do that kind of thing. If the Leafs don't respond physically, emotionally, uh, then they're going to be in trouble because you can't lose game two. No, I, you know what? It's, I don't see it. It's, it's not a must win, Steve. You're right in the sense that the series is over, but it more or less is. You, you're not going down to Tampa, down 2 nothing, and expecting to win four of the five, next five games. you got to win game two. Well, you're not going to beat Andre Vasilevsky four or five. So you must, you know, that's just, you must win. Well, then I guess what's, what are, what, what are the percentages say you're going to beat well, him in four or six then? Did you have to win last I, I, night? You know, I, shri- I think it, it can shrinks. be done. But Once I you just, lose one at home, yeah. it shrinks and, and the possibilities shrink. And if you lose two at home, you know, then it, we're talking about a long, long shot. Well, I said it couldn't get any worse than uh, game number one, but we'll see what the Leafs have in store for game number two on Thursday night. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. For Steve Simmons and Terry Koshan, I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next time on another Sun Sports Roundtable.